This is Spokane's waste to energy facility. It basically burns garbage to generate electricity. The process also reduces the amount of waste that must be buried in landfills. The waste to energy facility was designed and built by Wheelabrator Spokane. It's one of many waste to energy plants that operate nationwide. In September of 1991, Spokane's waste to energy plant changed the way we deal with our trash. Today, the facility processes more than 800 tons of garbage each day. That's 800 tons not going into landfill. A nine ton capacity orange peel crane mixes the trash, combining the old with the new and the wet with the dry. That mixing process creates a consistent fuel for the fire. Just like a campfire. If the fuel's too wet, it won't burn well. But if it's too dry, it will burn too fast. Remember, you should never burn garbage outdoors or in your fireplace. The waste to energy plant has state-of-the-art pollution control equipment that prevents the release of dangerous gases into the air. As the crane operator mixes trash for the fire, sometimes he or she finds a larger item that won't burn well. A skilled operator with a steady hand and a sharp eye can pick just about anything out of the pit. The facility actually has two cranes, but usually uses one at a time. Once the garbage is mixed, it's ready to be burned. The plant burns garbage in two boilers where temperatures reach up to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The feeding point into each boiler is called the hopper. The crane operator fuels the fire by feeding two to three tons of garbage at a time in each one. An interesting side note, some of the trash is wet and harder to burn. So once the trash is in the hopper, the ram feeder pushes it onto grates in the boiler. These grates have been designed specifically for solid waste. They move the trash through the burning process. Hot air from the fire dries the garbage in the drying zone. Exactly. A good fire needs lots of oxygen, and they have just the place to get it. Two huge fans move air from the pit areas and force it into the boilers through grates. And that leaves the tipping floor smelling fresh as a rose. Well, almost. Waste contains dangerous compounds that can end up in our air after it's burned if it isn't handled properly. The trash then enters the combustion zone the second stage of burning. The high temperature of the fire destroys dangerous organic compounds like furons and dioxins that can be found in waste. The third stage on the grates is final burnout. Final burnout ensures complete combustion, leaving a sterile, stabilized ash. The grates where the smelly air comes through makes up the floor of the boilers. The inner walls of each boiler are made up of a series of tubes filled with water. The hot fire heats up the water, which can get to over 800 degrees Fahrenheit. This high-pressure steam moves through a series of pipes into the turbine. The steam then turns sets of fan blades attached to a shaft in the turbine. Precisely. And at the other end of the shaft is a huge magnet. And that spinning magnet converts steam energy into electricity and that electricity moves out into a switching station and on to users. The process generates about 170 million kilowatt hours of electricity per year. That's enough to supply the energy needs of 13,000 homes. And from the ton of garbage that your household puts on the curb each year, enough electricity is produced to run 12 14-watt CFLs at your house for eight hours every day all year long. Furthermore, the sale of the energy generated by burning garbage helps with the cost of waste disposal as well. So they're running two huge boilers up there. And do you know what happens to that water when it passes through the system? As a matter of fact, I do. After the steam leaves the turbine, it passes through air-cooled condensers. The steam cools down and changes back to water. Similar to that of a car radiator. Very similar, but this cooling doesn't release any moisture into the atmosphere. Instead, it's recycled back into the boiler for reheating. The water used in the other parts of the process is also recycled. And none of that water used gets dumped into the sewage system. The waste to energy plant is burning 24 hours a day, and the air is surprisingly clean. And that's something we can all be happy about. And contrary to popular belief, this isn't smoke you're seeing, it's water vapor, or steam. Now this is smoke. A dirty looking vapor given off by a fire means the combustion process isn't complete. Thus, smoke. 
and the vapor from the fire in the boilers goes through extensive cleaning before it goes up the stack and out into the air. Air pollution control begins in the boiler. That's where ammonia is sprayed into the gases. This creates a reaction which converts the nitrogen oxides into molecular nitrogen, oxygen, and water vapor. Next, powdered carbon is injected into the gases, enhancing the capture of dioxins, furons, and heavy metals. Then the gases flow through an acid gas scrubber, and a slake of lime slurry is injected into the gas. So the lime slurry causes another chemical reaction that neutralizes the sulfur dioxide and hydrogen chloride. That's it. As the gas cools, a dry powder forms. Then the freshly scrubbed gases go to the bag house, where they're cleaned even more. The gas contains very fine ash, called fly ash, as well as powdered lime. The bag house works like a vacuum cleaner, filtering the ash through more than 3,500 Gore-Tex bags. Those bags capture the fly ash, letting only the clean air out. So when you see a plume, it is because the moist air coming out of the stack is warmer than the air outside. Plant employees using state-of-the-art equipment and computers are constantly sampling emissions from the stack. Those emissions must meet rigid pollution standards issued under the Federal Clean Air Act, the State of Washington Clean Air Act, and the rules of the Spokane Regional Clean Air Agency. Under normal operating conditions, emissions are always well within permit limits and standards. In addition to meeting these emission limits, the facility must also continuously meet other performance and operating standards contained in the Air Operating Permit issued by Spokane Regional Clean Air Agency and Operating Permits issued by the Spokane County Health District. Many natural and human-caused processes, including the burning of garbage, emit greenhouse gases, which cause climate change. However, the burning of garbage at Spokane's Waste to Energy facility actually reduces global greenhouse gas emissions. And the burning of garbage reduces landfill methane emissions, produces electricity, which would otherwise have been produced by burning fossil fuels, and recovers ferrous metals, which are recycled. On a life cycle basis, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, burning of a ton of garbage in a facility like Spokane's, rather than landfilling that ton of waste, actually reduces global greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to one ton of CO2. And that's something worth cheering about. But there's more work to be done with the fly ash captured in the bag house. The ash is blasted out of the bags every couple of minutes by a burst of air moving at 300 miles per hour. 300 miles per hour? <laughs> That's about twice as fast as a major hurricane. That's a lot of wind. The air forces the fly ash out and down into a closed conveyor. Now there are still heavy metals in the ash at this point. And because it's headed to a landfill, it's important that the metal particulates won't wash out in rainwater. That's why the ash is treated with a reagent in a process called Westfix. It changes the metal back to a natural ore-like state. We've been talking about the fly ash release, but there's also the bottom ash left over from the final phase of combustion. At the end of the grates, the bottom ash falls down into a quench tank filled with water. After cooldown, the ramp ash expeller pushes it onto a vibrating conveyor system. The vibration evenly distributes the ash and breaks up clumps. The conveyor moves it out to the ash handling building, which has been specially designed to keep the ash contained. There's still large pieces of unburned metal in the ash, but a machine called the Grizzly Separator removes those pieces. Then the ash runs under a powerful rotating drum magnet to capture the ferrous metal. The metal is then recycled into construction steel. Finally, the ash is taken in loads from the ash handling building. The loads are sealed and hauled by rail to a lime landfill 200 miles southwest of Spokane to Roosevelt, Washington. So when you put this much garbage in the pit, you end up with this much ash. Plus electricity. So it's easy to see that this much ash takes up a lot less space in the landfill than that trash. <laughs> the entire process is monitored from this control room. Well, waste to energy isn't quite rocket science, but this plant does require some special attention. The facility runs 24-7, and it only takes five employees per shift to run this entire plant. Did you just say five? As in one, two, three, four, five? Well, yeah. But 1,400 areas are constantly monitored and controlled with special equipment. 
And don't forget, this facility also must submit reports of these readings to regulatory agencies.